Here is an experiment you can do at home with friction. This is a toy boat. Yes, you guessed that right. And this is a wooden plank. Correct, that's two for two. I put the boat on the ramp and watch what happens. Nothing! The reason why is because the friction between the boat and the ramp is enough to counteract the force of gravity trying to pull it down. But watch what happens if I raise the ramp to the right height, the boat slides down because the friction isn't enough and gravity pulls it down. But when we change surfaces to this carpet, let's see what happens. Same angle, I can raise it higher, 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 because... <laughs> there's more friction between the carpet and the boat than there was between the wood and the boat. Now, if you're thinking that we're just gonna do it with a small ramp, you're wrong. Because of course we're gonna max it out. Hey, Helena. Hey. This is amazing. Thanks, I made it myself. Wow. Ready to climb it? Absolutely. Here we go. Where'd it go? Huh? Huh? No problem. So that was very easy. Well, that's probably because the friction from your shoes is high enough so you don't slip. Right, and the friction from my clothes is much lower, which is why I could slide down. Right. So how do we make it more difficult? We'd probably have to make it higher. All right, let's make it higher. With the ramp at a steeper angle, I'll need more friction to climb up. All right. Ready? I'm totally ready. Here I go. Whoa! Uh, you try. Okay, hold my turn. Here we go. Oh. oh, so clearly we are not getting enough friction between our shoes and the ramp at this angle. We should add some carpet because carpet would add some more friction between our shoes and the ramp. All right, let's add carpet. Sorry, here's your drill. Thanks. All right, carpet. Yeah. Same angle. Yes. And why have we done this? More friction. More friction. Let's give it a try. <laughs> hey, way to go. Totally able to climb the ramp. So what do we do now to make it harder? Make it higher. Make it higher. Wow, it's really steep. I don't think you're going to make it. Sure, if I take a really good run at it, I think I can do it. I don't think so. Well, there's one way to find out. No. No. Okay, so I can't do it. Is that it? Well, how about Velcro? Wow. Right? It'll give you more friction, so you can try climbing with this. We'll give you Velcro knee pads, Velcro shoes. Velcro. Velcro handholds, Velcro knee pad, Velcro on my shoes. Helmet for safety. Velcro fill, Velcro dance. Okay, you ready? Ready. All right, here we go. Ha-ha, I did it! Creating friction between me and this ramp means I can stay up here for as long as I w No. No, Velcro. No. No. Phil, you okay? Velcro! Friction! Your turn. No. Our hover disc worked well so well that we decided to build another. If we have two hover disks, then we can race them using different kinds of friction to push them along. Something that has low friction, like a dust mop, and something that has higher friction, like a pole with rubber balls at the end. Rubber has great friction. That's why we make car tires and the treads of our shoes out of rubber. Okay, we have a giant race course that we've set up. We've got two low friction hover disks, and I'm gonna use the low friction dust mop version to propel my hover disk. And Helena, what do you have? I have the high friction rubber ball stick. Start your engines! On your marks, get set, and go! And we're off. Remember, Helena and I are using very different methods to get our hover disks moving. I'm using a low friction dust mop, and Helena is using high friction rubber balls. As you can see, my low friction dust mop doesn't make enough friction with the ground for me to push myself. Helena, on the other hand, is having no problems. Yeah. 
Over the finish line, and it feels oh. way back over there. Oh, oh, man. I'm still stuck at the second turn. Way to go, Helena. Thank nice. You. So, what was the strategy? What, how did it work? Well, pretty much while I was using those red balls, I was getting friction, helping me steer. You know what? I think we need a little bit more thrust. That would work even better if we had something pushing us even harder. Definitely. Uh, yeah. wait. I have an idea. Wait, hold, hold. I need your, I need your help. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I'm at iFly Toronto indoor skydiving to talk to you about friction. That's Mike. He's going to help me out. OK, here we go. Unfortunately, we can't hear what Phil is saying because there's too much wind. It looks like, it looks like he's trying to tell us something about the friction. I, yes, he's saying the friction from the air rushing up in the chamber is enough to counteract the force of gravity. Which is why he's able to float. Or s swim. Or whatever he's doing. Now it looks like he might be saying even something like air can have a lot of friction if it's going fast enough. And the air in this chamber is going fast which is why we can't hear a word he's saying. Oh, well, he seems to be having fun. So how important is friction? Well, let's say I'm out for a drive. Car tires need friction to grip onto the road. Without it, my car wouldn't be able to turn at all. But that's nothing. Without friction, the bolts holding the wheels on the car wouldn't work. In fact, none of the bolts, screws, or glue on the car would work, and nothing would stop moving or stick to anything else. Even the trees would blow away with the slightest breeze. Friction is everywhere, and without it, nothing would work. OK, hover disk race round two. This time, we decided to have a little bit more thrust. So Helen I and I are going to be using fire extinguishers. Now, do not use fire extinguishers at home. Fire extinguishers have a very important purpose, and it's not for this. But we got these ones special. Are you ready, Helena? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, here we go. Russell? So, racers, start your engines. And go! Using fire extinguishers gives us a lot of thrust. But because the discs we're riding on don't have any friction, wherever we point ourselves, we just keep going in that direction, which makes steering very difficult. Cars grip onto the road and can go around corners thanks to the friction of their wheels. When you have no friction, it's kind of like moving on an ice rink. Oh no! I'm out! I ran, out of, I ran out of fire extinguisher at the end there, uh, but I, so I had to cheat a little bit. So one for you, one for me, and all of them for friction. Or oh, the lack of friction. Or the lack of friction. Science Max, experiments at large. What do we do next? Larger fire extinguishers? I think so. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. I, I know where we can get some, actually. We can go, if we go to um, the fire extinguisher store, where we got these fire extinguishers, we can one. get big like one. a rack. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. <laughs> this one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I. I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Carbon is an atom that is the basic building block. Oh, I we know it. You, me, you hit myself in the head with a friction sign.
That's more of an impact, not friction, really. How can you destroy my life anymore, Seth? Huh? 